Hello all and welcome to my YouTube channel on Dental Implantology. So as promised, I am again ready with another video on dental implants. So this video will be covering some brief history about the implants. Then subsequently, I will be discussing about uh, the anatomy because as I told you that anatomy is the most important thing uh, in dental implantology. So implant is a very wide term. I mean, if you uh, if you talk about implant, anything which is placed inside your body is an implant, no matter what material it is made up of. So in this picture, uh, there is one seashell has been uh, implanted inside a socket. It was also an implant, but you know, uh, somehow there has been a lot of research and there has been a lot of data that uh, mm, uh, we have used a lot of things historically to place inside uh, the jaw. He is Professor Brainmark, uh, Dr. Brainmark. He was an orthopedic surgeon. So he coined the term osteointegration. Uh, he was doing some research on rabbit uh, that uh, uh, if you place a titanium cylinder uh, inside the rabbit, I just wanted to study the blood flow in the bone. But later on, when he tried to remove that particular cylinder, he was not able to do that. So the material was titanium and it has somehow osteointegrated or somehow ankylosed with the bone. So later on, he and uh, Professor Brainmark also placed uh, an implant inside the jawbone as well in, in years somewhere around 1965 and the procedure was successful. As I told you, there has been a lot of research about the implants. You, in this uh, slide, you can see that different shapes like blade shape, cylindrical shape, or screw shape and this is transosseous implants. If you can see here, this is a peristal implant. So just below the peristem. So there has been a lot of research about the implant shapes and all. Now we people are using endosseous implant, which is endo means inside and osseous means bone. So anything which is placed inside the bone is an endosseous. So now now there has been a lot of research. So I'll I'll come to that point later on. Just to think about uh, modern dentistry, implant planning is very important. So there are certain steps of dental implant planning. I divide implant planning uh, in three three parts. First is clinical evaluation, which is the most important part. Uh, the second is radiographic evaluation, then 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 a proper implant planning. There is no charm in saying that there is no absolute contraindication of implants because there are no uh, absolute contraindication. The same way we we say that there is no absolute contraindication for extraction. In the same way we say the similar thing like there is no absolute contraindication for implant placement as well. So these are certain situations uh, we we call them relative contraindication. Um, the same thing uh, we we talk about extractions. So be be careful in patients uh, who are treated with radiations because it causes uh, hypocellularities and uh, necrosis of the bone if you still use that particular bone for implant placement. So always be careful in those cases. Uh, otherwise, anything which is related to the bone or diseases of the bone, you should correct them before uh, planning an implant surgery. So when we talk about clinical evaluation is uh, is the things when we when the patient come to your clinic uh, you saw inside your inside the mouth so this is just a clinical evaluation so a lot of things are important like never miss occlusion occlusion is the most important thing then uh, the most important thing which i feel like is the inter arch space i'm talking about this space remember one thing the patient is coming for the tooth and he's not coming for the implant so when you see inter uh, arch space that means you should have enough space to place the crown so i always say my students to see that particular thing because uh, even a great implantologist miss all those things we always think about implants and implants and implants but the patient is not coming for the implants he's coming for the tooth so always always look for your inter arch space we know that bone is the most important thing for the implants but uh, when we uh, see uh, patients, they have a covering that is the periosteum and then the mucosa. We, we call it mucoperiosteum. So sometimes mucoperiosteum is very thick. So ridge ma mapping is the procedure which can be done to measure uh, that particular periosteum. So there are certain techniques which is called ridge mapping which you can do clinically. There is, uh, there is no need to uh, take the sections of CBCTs and all. 
but this come under uh, clinical evaluation so ridge mapping is a thing i'll explain you in the next slide how to do ridge mapping so when you do manual palpation in this particular slide uh, you you uh, digitally check the width of the bone but actually when you are palpating it it's just not only the bone it is the mucoperistem which is also coming up with the bone so we use boils gauge or uh, some calipers uh, just to prick inside uh, uh, that particular uh, tissue and check uh, how much is the depth okay and then you can measure uh, and you can uh, subtract that uh, distance uh, i mean the mucoperistem distance from the bone and on the cast you remember um, uh, two slide back i have shown you uh, pencil marks on the cast so this is how you can come to a conclusion that what is the actual uh, bone width so this can be done clinically and it's a very easy technique and if you don't want to do that you want to go for advanced cbct procedure that will give you the exact width of the bone for a beginner i suggest that you can go for a wax up or you can um, you can plan your uh, actual uh, crowns after placement of implant and you can make a surgical guide also with that because they will give you exact proper position of placement of the implant that will be the best technique because prosthesis you should always look into your mind before placing an implant the another thing which comes uh, after in the implant planning is radiographic evaluation um, once you have done a complete clinical checkup it's important to do radiographic evaluation so there are different radiographs you know that i don't want to go into depth with that you can take intraoral radiographs you can take opgs you can take cbcts all those things will give you a better idea that uh, how i am going to plan my case bone quality is the most important thing you need to know what is the height of your bone what is the width of your bone what is the length of your bone what is the angulation we always miss out uh, on the angulation part um, because angulation is the most important thing uh, i'll i'll explain you everything later because there's a certain curvature of the mandible and the maxilla and there is a pattern of bone loss which uh, will help you in uh, uh, deciding what angulation i want to place my implant bone quality can be measured in hounsfield units uh, yeah, cbcd have uh, some certain tools which can give you an idea of hounsfield units if high if the bone is very dense the hounsfield units are very high and vice versa this slide is showing a panoramic view uh, of uh, of maxilla and mandible so uh, i i i talk about bone height bone height in relation to uh the maxillary sinus and the inferior alveolar nerve you can see here the e mark uh, is is the height measuring uh on the inferior alveolar nerve and then we have a b c d c d are maxillary sinus a and b showing the nasal sinus and if you can see the f part which is in the center or just uh, between the two mental foramens um this is the highest uh, uh, height of the bone you can Uh, have inside the jaw even uh, mm, uh, even in the inferior alveolar nerve areas mm, we 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 can uh, what do you call buccalize that particular inferior alveolar nerve to increase uh, the length of the implant this particular slide is showing the measurement of the maxillary sinus if you can see here we have uh, measured the maxillary sinus now you you see this thing this is just the soft tissue so start your marking from here okay uh, the soft tissue you can easily see that certain soft tissues is there so you start your marking from here go to the maxillary sinus lining here is the maxillary sinus line so in this particular place the height is less here the height is little high so depends upon um, the situations to situations so we 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 have to go for a sinus lift procedure in this particular area but that's fine we can place a good height implant in this area there are a lot of anatomical consideration the most important consideration is the anterior loop somehow we miss out whenever you see a mental foramen um, never think that your nerve is ending there but nerve takes an anterior loop anterior loop like this so so this is an anterior loop of the nerve always remember this thing it's not that always uh, the nerve takes a loop before coming out from a mental foramen sometimes it comes out straightly sometimes it takes an anterior loop and this distance varies in uh, different patients 
So this particular slide is showing uh, the interior loop. So we have to mark from the interior loop. We have to go at least 2 millimeter in front of the interior loop. If you take the measurement just from the metal foramen, that can give you wrong uh, measurements. Just consider some distance that, okay, there can be an anterior loop. So just we have to place at least 2 millimeter um, towards the mesial side um, after the anterior loop of uh, inferior alveolar nerve. Typically, the anterior loop ranges from 0.5 millimeters to 3 millimeters, um, and we should be very much clear with the anterior loop. So somehow always uh, think about that if 3 mm is the maximum um, what you call anterior loop uh, distance, so you have to at least 5 millimeter from the mental foramen. So always remember that, and uh, no, not in every case you have to see the markings on the CBCT and all those things to exactly define where my anterior loop is. Okay, these are different situations of infalvar nerve curvature. Uh, we can have a linear, we can have a spoon shape. Spoon shape looks very good. You can have a good height of implant. The, this is elliptical one and this is turning curve. So turning curve is means that it's very close to the crystal bone. So this is the most dangerous situation. So this line is showing uh, the most common is the elliptical one. So uh, this is relatively secure. But this one is with a greater risk. And the linear one are also of risk. But spoon shape is the most secure. So be ready that 40, 40 around 50% cases will be like elliptical. So this is uh, distance from the midline to the mental foramen. It ranges from 20 to 23. When you people are placing the implant in the mandible, always be careful about this lingual bulge. Uh, around some mandibular fossa or a lingual fossa uh, when you are replacing 4, 7 or 3, 7 remember that your bone is like this so sometime we place the implant like that so the plain implant will come inside that lingual area be careful because that is what the uh, very common complication occurs with the implants when you are placing an implant then check you should have uh, bone hair, hair, buckly, lingually, there should be certain distance between the implants. A minimum one millimeter of the bone is required here, then in the same way some bone is required here as well. So this particular slide uh, tell us about how much is the distance you should keep between the implants and the tooth. This, this distance should be at least 1.5 millimeters, I'm talking about this distance. Okay, so uh, a distance between the implants should be at least 3 millimeters. So, so you should check with these distances. So, measure this distance. This is very important. Okay, this is an implant. Uh, this is an important slide. It shows uh, different uh, types of bone quality. They can be D1, D2, D3, D4. Uh, the classification is based on uh, uh, dense bone, that is. Uh, cortical bone and the cancellous bone. D1 is mostly having the cortical bone. D2 is having cortical and cancellous. And D3 is having most of the cancellous bone and D4 is mostly cancellous. So ideally D2 or D3 bone are better for implant placement. D1 is very hard. D4 is absolutely soft. So we need to check the quality. As I've told you that we can check through Hounsfield units. So this is internal uh, bone structure. You can say that this is having coarse tuberculosis. This is having little less coarse. So this is not a good for implant placement. This is this is fine. So we see a lot of videos and all. You you see rosy pictures of bone, and we are placing an implant, but actually the bone is very much coarse hair. This is mostly D3 uh, bone in the maxilla, and when we do an extraction, you can see socket like this. So be careful, it's it's not always easy to place an implant. So in this particular case, you see socket is how much wide. Okay, this is typical uh, bone loss pattern. If you can see here, this is a young adult. This is a little bit old lady. Uh, see that ridge is getting a little thin and this area. So always keep in your mind that this these are the certain kind of curvature you see when you lose your teeth and uh, the pattern of bone loss. Uh, remember the previous slide I was talking about the uh, 
lingual sulcus uh, or I mean lingual fossa so this this is this is the axial section you can say that if 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 i cut the mandible like this you can see this kind of situation avoid placing implant like this i mean just like this place an implant like this here be careful okay this slide is showing uh, hmm, sections uh, we use in cbct and radiography this is a typically axial section and you see uh, CBCD like this. If you take a coronal section, you see a CBCD like this. If you take a sagittal section, you see a CBCD like this. So all these sections are important to me measure the bone dimensions. So I mean, you can check the bone width here. You can check, check, check here. You can check uh, in sagittal section in the anterior region. So these are different kind of section you use to evaluate the bone. Similar to the previous slide, this is an axial section, this is a this is a coronal section, this is a sagittal section, you see and evaluate accordingly. See, always keep the pattern of bone loss. This is for maxilla. When when ridges this here the ridge is very wide, now it's getting thin, thin, thin. You see that it is completely thin. In the same pattern, the mag mandible, the bone is uh, the width is very high the ridge is getting thinner 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 you see typically here there is a good amount of basal bone okay but basal bone is very thin so if you shave this bone you still have good bone inside so then when mandible resorb completely this is the situation we see remember uh, remember that typically we have to have a lot of load on mandible on the jaws somewhere around 500 newton meter of the force which 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 is the which is uh, uh, faced by the posterior tooth uh, and somewhere around 100 newton meter force is uh, for faced by anterior tooth so remember that wider diameter implants is required here you can plan a little less dia in this particular area typically this slide is showing uh, different steps we have given incision here raise the flap now uh, then we we place the implant then place a cover screw this is a typical x-ray after placement and this is the slide showing a good tight primary closure i have already told you about the distance between implants and the tooth there should be at least 1.5 millimeters of distance between tooth and the implant at least 3 millimeter of the distance between the implant and minimum 4 millimeter diameter for the posterior maxilla and the mandible as well so if you are if you are planning two implants uh, okay so we should have at least 14 millimeter of distance so if you can measure 1.5 from here three millimeters between two implants four plus four is the dia of the implants here and 1.5 between implant and and the tooth if you measure and calculate everything it should be at least 14 millimeters if you're planning two implants Always remember uh, when uh, the patient grow older, the nerves, the inferior nerve come more crystal. So always remember that nerve will be more crystal in old age people. We uh, always say go buckle. There is a reason behind that. If you can see here, the lingual nerve is coming on the lingual aspect. So sometimes the lingual nerve is very close to the lingual part of the mandible. So always go a little buckle because we have a dense bone in the buckle side in the mandible. Okay, this is another slide showing uh, the lingual aspect of the mandible. See how many structures are there. Be careful. In the similar pattern, uh, this is a cut in the mandible here. Now you can see what are the important structures here. This is mylohyoid ridge, submandibular gland, sublingual gland. All those things are important structures. This slide is showing the mental foramen here. Uh, the nerve is coming out, and there is a sectioning of the implant on the posterior side. Of course, we don't go much posterior, but still, uh, we should uh, always see the anatomy. See, this this slide is also showing uh, that this nerve uh, it's coming out that, and this part is going inside, which is the inferior nerve. Okay, if we go a little briefly, we should prepare the patient first, then soft tissue incision, then prepare the implant side, then implant placement. These are typical steps for implant procedure. So we should scrub the patient first, clean all the area, make the patient rinse through uh, chlorhexidine or betadine. That means sterilize all the area and make sure that instruments should be in a proper sterilized condition. And the implant is packed inside a sterilized 
uh, chamber if chamber is punctured change the implant always remember give a firm incision we as i've told you that uh, the bone is covered with mucoperisteum that there is a peristeum layer then there is a mucosa layer so when you give a firm incision all the mucosa and peristeum should be i mean the incision should be bone depth so that uh, when you uh, raise the flap it should come out very easily with the periosteum otherwise otherwise it will be very difficult it will it will be um, uh, it will be packed with a lot of bleeding okay, once uh, okay once you have given the incision you raise the flap prepare the bone flatten the bone sometimes and uh, you should have a good bed for the implant placement then uh, start drilling okay this slide is showing uh, i mean uh, we have raised the flap and this is showing uh, the bone here we do drilling we we call it subsequent osteotomy first of all incision then lancet drill then osteotomy 1 2 then place the implant according to the last drill so that is subsequent osteotomy and this is the final placement always remember to give a proper tight closure primary closure is very important and it is very important and necessary for good healing placing an anterior implant is very challenging because we see the labial bone is very thin and when we start putting the drill it usually go along the socket but we have to go a little more palatally in continuation with the previous slide so this will be the final uh, lancet drill let's see in the next slide what what happen next prepare the osteotomy till the final uh, drill according to size of the implant and if you have any question uh, uh, go to my uh, section where i am explaining uh, how to do osteotomy Okay this is the final placement of the implant here you can see there is certain jumping distance here i mean i'm talking about this distance so you can pack with the bone if if jumping distance is very high or you can do socket shielding i'll explain the socket shielding technique in the later videos just it, it is just a beginner video just remember that anterior it's it's very challenging to place the implant sometimes because of the thin labial bone remember i initial slide i was talking about uh, perforation of the lingual cortical bone so if you can see this guy has not checked the angulation here he has just placed the implant inside remember that the lingual artery is there even in the anterior side if if you don't uh, check the curvature of the bone and uh, i mean puncture the lingual cortical plate devastating effects can be seen here the tongue is absolutely raised it's very difficult to give a digital pressure in this area maybe cause it it may cause breathing distress also look at the ecchymosis here so all these complications are very common be be careful uh, always remember that if you are not sure go for cbct and check the curvature of the bone okay i was talking about this situation here wrong placement here the correct placement see somebody has drilled till here but okay he managed to place the implant little more superior but drilling has been done here so it it can also cause the uh, complications Okay my love for implant uh, dentistry has been very long Dr Morris Salama I've been with a lot of leading implantologist so I learned a lot of from master so I really it, it it was a passionate learning on implants It's always great to learn from the masters you can see uh, Dr Praful Bali in this uh, video thank you sir Before starting my own practice I was working with Clove Dental doing a lot of implants um, I would also like to thank Clove Dental for making me learn a lot of implants Okay this is a very old photograph uh, collected in 2016 so in this picture you can see uh, certain leading implantologists we we could able to manage place 10000 implants uh in 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 clove dental so i really want to thank everybody uh, who has helped me in achieving the, the the these goals now i have started my own private practice in greater noida i am running uh, 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 uh dental hospital here 
so uh, you are most welcome to come and join our courses uh, we can make you learn a lot about implant dentistry so do remember to subscribe my channel and for uh, more updates uh, stay tuned and i'm sure that you the, the the next videos will be very beneficial to you so i'm signing off thank you so much